There's nothing quite like a good shock at the movies, and while everyone loves to see their heroes live happily ever after, sometimes audiences need a reminder that life isn't all sunshine and roses. Here are a few movies where the villain actually wins. The Star Wars universe is no stranger to a villainous victory or two, with warring space factions trading constant blows back and forth across various conflicts. Rogue One and Revenge of the Sith certainly end on some downloads, for example, but the series' most iconic dark side victory came in the middle chapter of the original trilogy. Following the first film, which left off on a Death Star destroying high, The Empire Strikes Back came crashing back down to reality when it opened with the crushing defeat of the rebel forces on Hoth. While the movie splinters at that point, with various characters heading off to do their own thing, Thing, the paths of the protagonists ultimately lead back to Lando Calrissian's floating heaven of Cloud City. Unfortunately, when Darth Vader and his minions show up to Calrissian City, things quickly go south for pretty much everyone. Han Solo is tortured and used as a test subject for carbon freezing, leaving him in suspended animation. Calrissian loses Cloud City to the Empire. Meanwhile, Luke is lured into a trap and confronted with one of cinema's greatest ever twists. Needless to say, there's no doubt that Empire's final act is a home run for Vader and the Empire from start to finish. The 2008 film Valkyrie is inspired by the failed assassination attempt made against Adolf Hitler in the summer of 1944 by a cabal of German officers aiming to overthrow the Nazi regime. Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg joins Major General Henning von Tresco and a member of other conspirators who set up a plan to kill off the dictator and use the reserve army to maintain order and establish themselves as the new government. From there, they plan to use their power to negotiate favorable peace terms with the Allies, who at that point are on the clear path to victory. The film follows the story just as it actually unfolded, with everything seeming to move towards victory for von Stauffenberg and his co-conspirators. In fact, the movie does it so well, it almost makes you forget that you already know what's about to go down. But alas, Valkyrie is ruthlessly tethered to reality. Initially, the assassination comes tantalizingly close to success, with the planted explosives going off successfully and Operation Valkyrie being put into action. But before long, reports surface that Hitler survived the explosion. And from there, the whole plot collapses. The movie ends with Hitler still alive and the film's heroes executed for treason, which is about as bad as things possibly could have gone. Over the years, Marvel Comics have seen plenty of tragic endings and grisly cliffhangers, but the MCU itself has tended to prefer the good guys to come out on top. But this trend has recently begun to change, having kicked off in earnest when Captain America Civil War put the Avengers against one another, leaving a host of angry, PTSD-ridden superheroes behind in the process. This slide downhill only sped up with Thor Ragnarok, an otherwise fun movie that ended with Asgard destroyed and a small handful of survivors setting out in search of a new home. But it was only during Avengers Infinity War that Marvel finally opened up a universe in which the villains really can win. The colossal crossover event finds the hero struggling to rise up and defend the universe against Thanos and his cronies, only for the Mad Titan to finally pull off his cataclysmic finger snap and wipe out half the universe in the process. I am inevitable. While much of Thanos' mad destruction was undone in Avengers Endgame, Infinity War was nonetheless so focused on Thanos and his story that his victory during the film's closing moments was never anything but inevitable. Seven follows detectives William Somerset and David Mills as they investigate a series of murders by a mysterious criminal who uses the seven deadly sins as his calling card. The movie gains speed as the duo uncover the first five sins, but before the last two take place, the murderer, known as John Doe, turns himself in to the authorities while covered in the blood of an unknown victim. As the movie wraps up, the growing sense of impending doom becomes practically unbearable. Doe directs Mills and Somerset to the desert, where he informs them that the last two victims will be found. Of course, they're already present as Doe confesses to being envious of Mills' idyllic life with his pregnant wife Tracy, before a box arrives on the scene, containing Tracy's head inside. Mills then gives in to temptation and kills Doe, who becomes the final victim of wrath. Aside from being messed up in so many ways, Seven's plot is never in the hands of the movie's protagonists, with Doe in total control right up until the credits roll. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight delivered more than just an outstanding performance from a greatly missed actor, since Heath Ledger's Joker was also one of the first superhero villains to have his way with the hero from beginning to end. From the moment he enters that dramatic opening high sequence to his last laugh during the film's climax, the infamous DC villain easily steals the show. The Dark Knight revolves almost entirely around the Joker's schemes against Gotham and Batman, many of which are pulled off without a hitch. As a result, this second film in Nolan's epic trilogy leaves Rachel Dawes dead. Harvey Dent warped into two face and killed soon after, Batman on the run after taking responsibility for Dent's crimes, and the bat signal destroyed by Commissioner Gordon. See, madness, as you know, is like gravity. 
All it takes is a little push. <laughs> and sure, the Joker is eventually apprehended and has his nihilistic philosophy thoroughly disproven by the people of Gotham at the same time, but everything else went off about as well as he could have hoped. Christopher Nolan appears to have something of a gift for letting the villains win. In this case, you've got Memento. The narrative follows Leonard Shelby, a man who suffers from memory loss every five minutes. This is a recent affliction that has been occurring ever since two men assaulted and murdered his wife. After Shelby killed one of them, the other knocked him on the head and escaped, leaving him with his new mental handicap. Shelby is dead set on hunting down the other man responsible for his wife's death, but plagued with short-term memory loss, he is forced to use tattoos and Polaroid cameras in an elaborate system to remind himself of what he discovers. The movie is filmed in both color and black and white sequences, showing different angles of perception and giving a sense of bizarre confusion that helps the audiences relate to the film's hero. Except Shelby isn't the hero. As the movie concludes, we find that he has been cyclically hunting down and taking vengeance on innocent people for a year. Repressing this information, Shelby tampers with his own photographic evidence, allowing his condition to wash all guilt away within the next few minutes and permitting him to continue his villainous behavior. While Peter Jackson's film adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's or inspiring Lord of the Rings trilogy has many happy moments during its runtime, the ending of the first film, The Fellowship of the Ring, isn't one of them. As the film reaches its crescendo, the Fellowship has already gone through the devastating loss of Gandalf. But things go from bad to worse as the forces of Mordor close in on them. Boromir kicks things off by falling to the lore of the Ring and attempting to take it from Frodo. Unsuccessful and repentant, Boromir and the rest of the heroes turn their attention to a sudden attack of Orahai soldiers sent by Boromir to find the ring. The attack splits the group up, with the villains killing Boromir and successfully carrying off the hobbits Merry and Pippin. Frodo, meanwhile, leaves with Sam across the river, and the two begin to work their way towards Mordor alone. All in all, this ending is about as chaotic as it gets, and doesn't lead to any one of the protagonists actually getting their way. Though Triumph lies ahead, the truth is that Fellowship is a movie about the power of camaraderie. That nonetheless tears its characters away from each other during its final moments, and that's about as bleak as it gets. Though it's outside the canon of the MCU and doesn't have quite as catastrophic an ending as Infinity War, X-Men First Class is another Marvel movie that doesn't reward its heroes with a happy ending. In this prequel to the original X-Men movies, the storyline jumps back in time to the 1960s to explore the origin stories of its heroes and villains. In particular, the film focuses on the development of the relationship between Professor Charles Xavier and Eric Lencher, which is the story of a profound and meaningful friendship right up until it isn't. We have it in us to be the better man. We already are. We're the next stage of human evolution. You said it yourself. No, no. While the movie itself brought a fresh spin to a flagging franchise, its story ended on a dark note with the rise of an iconic Marvel villain, Magneto. As the film enters its final act, the differences between Xavier's and Lencher's views on mutant activism come to a head, with Lencher dramatically parting ways with a critically wounded Xavier and his team. This sets him on a journey towards becoming the franchise's most notable villain and begins a rivalry fated to go down in history. Like Valkyrie, Life is Beautiful is another story that ends with the Nazis coming out on top. This classic Italian film was directed and co-written by the incredibly talented Roberto Benigni, who also played the lead role alongside Nicoletti Braschi, his wife of nearly 30 years. The first half of the film is almost entirely light and comedic, as it follows Guido, a Jewish bookshop owner in Italy who shamelessly pursues the love of his life with a little slapstick clowning and a lot of Italian charm. But things take a drastic turn when the narrative jumps forward several years to a Nazi-occupied Italy, where Guido, his wife, and their son are sent to a concentration camp. When in the camp, the bookshop owner uses his incredibly resilient imagination to tirelessly shield his son from the horrors around them, convincing the young boy that they're on a strange kind of holiday. Despite the subject matter, the movie does actually build toward a happy ending, until in a gut-wrenching turn, Guido is gunned down by Nazis just as the camp is liberated. And while Guido's son's innocence is preserved, the loss of the film's lovable protagonist is nonetheless a shocking note for the film to end on. Just like the classic 1949 George Orwell novel on which it's based, the movie 1984 is about as depressing as it gets. From the infamous thought police to the near-endless torture, brainwashing, and double-think, this movie pretty much established all the classic tropes of futuristic dystopian horror. The film is set in a world where a single united superstate of Oceania is run like a well-oiled autocratic machine, in which every move and thought of its inhabitants is scrutinized for any deviation from government-approved behavior. The story follows Winston Smith, a supposed 
undoubtedly loyal worker at the Ministry of Truth. Smith deviates from the rules when he meets Julia and begins to secretly pursue an affair with a daring fellow Thor criminal. Of course, government forces prove much more powerful than two people, and the end of the movie shows the couple as they're caught and put through a system of rehabilitation in which they are tortured and forced to face their greatest fears in order to break their rebellion and ensure their future cooperation with the regime. And that heartbreaking ending in the cafe, in which Julia and Winston coldly admit they betrayed each other, leaves no doubt whatsoever that Big Brother has come out on top. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.